So in this uh, video, I want to talk about the $50 million story and the story of a general who leads this uh, fight. Right now, why do I want to talk about this is because recently I came back from a business trip uh, from Silicon Valley uh, in San Francisco and the purpose of this particular trip uh, was to, number one, look at a business in one of the most competitive marketplace in the quote unquote real estate space, right? And I know this because I hear so much stories and war stories about the kind of sellers that are unrealistic in terms of what they're asking for uh, the home. And um, I've heard a story of how difficult it is, but this particular gentleman is uh, doing really well in the eyes of society of in terms of real estate. Now, clearly in his eyes, he believes that he can do much better and uh, this is where kind of the story starts from. So I met him at an event uh, called Relentless, uh, um, which was back in, I want to say June of this year. Um, yeah, June of this year. And I literally sat next to him and his wife uh, at the event on the front row. Um, this is an event where uh, Danny Morell actually ran the event for predominantly for salespeople in real estate space, but there's definitely people outside of real estate. And one of the keynote speakers there was uh, Gary V or Gary Vaynerchuk. And I went out there because I haven't been to one of these events and but also at the same time I want to network mingle uh, kind of get a better pulse of what's happening locally right and to build some strong bonds and relationship uh, with people there so I was there sitting there you know being the student of the game like I always am which is taking a bunch of notes networking and meeting people and and the couple that sat next to me on the right was Alex Lear and uh, the Lear family right so he runs a brokerage a, a boutique brokerage in Silicon Valley and uh, um, long story short, I went out there with uh, my good friend Kevin to actually analyze what's going on with the business to kind of pick his brain. Now, before I went out there, I did do some homework on him. So I watched some of the actual videos he's done in the past as well as what he has done in terms of uh, real estate volume currently right now. And I had an idea in terms of who this particular person was. But what surprised me is when I went there, okay is what shocked me the most his ability to not only be able to articulate exactly as I imagine he would be but also at the same time some of the details that he talked about when we approached the actual brokerage so we flew out um, literally uh, the flight I woke up that morning this was a, a Wednesday woke up in the morning about 3 uh, 30 a.m. and took a, a flight um, our flight was uh, boarding, I think, around 6, and we landed around, uh, I want to say 7, maybe it was 6.30, I'm sorry, and we landed around 8 a.m., and uh, we got a rent-a-car, and we went to the office, okay? The office is located in uh, San Carlos, um, uh, slash San Mateo, Redwood City, kind of in that pocket, and that's his backyard, and that's where he does business. So as we approached there, he immediately came out, because we knew that we were coming, and instantly, boom, you know, he went into kind of giving a tour of the office. Now, a lot of times, you know, no. When people are talking about what's going on or giving a tour of the office, right? Either, uh, number one, if you, if you have never trained your mind to look at businesses, um, then you're gonna, you're not gonna pick out the subtleties of what, what he was explaining. But it was interesting on how he started explaining from the time that he walked in and as he's explaining things, right? And he's walking through the office and talking about certain things. I'm like, you know, this guy is paying attention to details. So, so let me give you some couple things that I've learned on this and why I say he's a general leading, uh, kind of a, a champion in his idea, his vision, uh, because it is a boutique brokerage, but also at the same time, it is a family, right? It's a family run and he's a uh, second generation, uh, been in the business over, I want to say 30 plus years. I think, uh, 33 years or 32 years, which is kind of about the same time I've been alive. So, which was really interesting. <laughs> um, so he's seen it all and he's second generation, right? So, uh, his son is working with them as well. It's a family business, so it's super cool. So when we got in there, right, he's, he's giving the tour of the brokerage. I'll give you a couple of things that stuck in my mind, right? So first thing is he started explaining about kind of the conference room as you walk in immediately on the left. And immediately on the left, I noticed that one, the glass is kind of smoked, you can't see through it, right? So I instantly noticed that, okay? As well as right when I walked in on the left, there was a sign of a hello, welcome in different type of languages, right? Um, I saw Japanese, Chinese, uh, Tagalog, Korean, as well as Hindi, uh, things like that. So it was pretty cool, so it was on that. And then when you walked in, 
he and he started explaining. He says, "Yeah, we actually smoke this because it's kind of weird if people can look in, but also at the same time, he said, check out these chairs, right? And he pointed at the chairs and uh, he explained how the chairs are purposefully uncomfortable." purposefully uncomfortable and uh, he explained the reason why he does that is because he wants people to talk really quick and then uh, not hang out there for most of the time so they can get up and then he can probably show give them the tour of the office and things like that right and instantly that dawned on me on something where my dad ta uh, told me this when I was little where we went to Japanese restaurants and it was really really uncomfortable and I remember sitting there and I was just like dad these chairs suck how come they can't uh, put little comfortable you know things on there and my dad's saying they're doing it purposely you know, because they don't want people to sit here, um, sit here forever, right? Because they want people to come in and out, right? So, um, which made sense because, you know, that's how you make more money, right? So, um, kind of ideas as he's explained this, I'm just like, okay, all right, I get this, you know? And even the images and pictures that he had on the walls was for me, it was just like, okay, it's purposeful. And he explained that it is like, for example, he had a lot of wards and designations, right? But the wards and designation, a lot of times when you go to people's offices, guess what? They place them right on the desk. And really, for me, when I walk in there, that just instantly shows like what? You're pounding on your chest and you're just like, oh, look at me. I'm a badass producer. Oh, look at me. I'm a top dog. But in reality, if you take a picture of that and you put it up on the wall, right? And then it's next to your family pictures and a couple other stuff that's going on, right? Instantly, I call that a humble brag, right? You're like literally humble bragging. You're not really like say, oh, look at me, but it's really like, oh, 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 cool, you know, and that kind of stuff. And uh, he kind of explained that he did that purposefully, so which was really interesting. So we took that, and then he went into the next room, and uh, he started to explain as he goes in, um, there's immediately on the right, there's kind of a map, right? The map of the city, right? And uh, Think about this for a second, right? In the digital age that we live in, right? We kind of lose the reality and the sense of perception of what things mean, especially if you're not quite familiar with the real estate, all right, or what the market is. So as he did this, one of the most impactful thing was he got this big old map, probably it was in width wise, it had to be at least like five feet, right? And he takes this and he pulls it down, okay? And as he pulls it down, you can hear it. And then as he does that, right, I'm thinking, oh, okay, he's doing this purposefully, right? And uh, because a sales presentation, you do everything purposefully. Why? It's because every little detail that you do, it gets you a little bit closer for someone to say yes to, right? So, and as he does that, right, um, I'm staying quiet, I'm watching this, and I'm kind of smiling, kind of probably had a smirk on my face probably because I was just like, okay, that's what he's doing. And then he explained, he says, look. I pull this down and I exp explain to the client that, hey, this is what's going on in the marketplace. Some of the gentrification, this is where the buyers are coming from. They're crossing over from the bridge to this side. They're getting priced out here, so they're moving uh, They're moving south here and things like that. And he explained in a way as a general would uh, going into war. And that's the analogy that he used. He said, hey, hey, we're going to war and I want to make sure I show you the landscape of what's going on. So that way you have the best chance of getting the highest price available as well as obviously if he's probably talking to the buyers, you'll probably explain to them is like, hey, this is the reason why you got to come in as the most aggressive offer, right? I don't know exactly the conversation he has with them, but that's the guess I have because that's how he was explaining to myself and a good friend, Kevin, right? So he's, he's pulling it down. He pulled it down and explained it as he's a general showing kind of landscape and the map. Right, so now, now keep in mind, okay, imagine if you're a seller or a buyer and you're walking in and you don't know him from a can of paint and you're watching him explain this instantly, you're like, oh my gosh, he really legitimately knows the landscape. Not only that, but because of the family pictures, right, and purposely because it's there, instantly you know he's second generation as well as the guy is sharp and uh, the guy knows his stuff. So as you're going through this, I'm just like, okay, 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 he's made of something else. And you know what it did for me? Okay, and I'm not going to go into too much of the rest of the story. Maybe I'll do depending on the comments I get below uh, because I have to hop into the office. And is this is that intention and purpose, right? And then the other one is the psychology that he has and he brings, um, which was a really, really interesting thing that I took away is because you can clearly tell is that he's walked through hell. Now, why do I say that? is because number one, he's been in the real estate for uh, over 30 plus years. And he explained to me some of the things he's done in the past, right? But he's not holding on to that. 
Not only is he not holding on to it, but he doesn't absolutely care what the real estate market does. And not only that, but he's over 50. Keep this in mind, okay? Over 50, and he probably has more energy than some 20-some-year-old uh, kid that I know right that's in the real estate game and that's how amazing it is you can just tell right you look in his eyes he has that look in his eyes that hey he's out there and he's a killer and if you ever go to war you would want something like him on your side to actually be a general and fight along next to you and you want to surround yourself with people like that right you want to have people like that where not only are their intensity is there but also at the same time they walk the walk talk the talk right so don't get caught up in your bubble sometimes. Get out of it, right? So again, imagine this, right? In the last 60 days, I went to the Philippines and, and we went to uh, places that in terms of eyes of society here in the United States, it's beyond ghetto. It's beyond poverty. I'm talking about we delivered books in literally a city trash dump where you had chickens and pigs running across and uh, um, literally the walls are made out of aluminum and you know looks like if a wind comes it's gonna blow it off right and then from sitting in a coffee shop literally coffee shops to um, other restaurants and you hear people chirping and talking about entrepreneurship talking about business people actually pitching to raise money at a coffee shop ladies and gentlemen and then versus if I go to a coffee shop here in Southern California they're talking about the Kardashians. They're talking about some some stuff that remotely I'm not interested in and something on TV or something in politics of what Trump did wrong. And that was the most interesting thing. So get out of your bubbles, get out of your comfort zone, and I hope it doesn't sound like I'm talking from an ivory tower where um, I've been in that kind of comfort zone. And as they say, conformity is the enemy of becoming great. Or another book is uh, from Jim Collins, Good to Great. Good is the enemy of great. And uh, you got to get uncomfortable, right? It's the uncomfortable happiness. So that's what I got for you. If you enjoyed this, let me know. I will be doing more of this live stream. I'll talk to you then. Take care. Bye-bye.